and welcome to I-24 News Sports Weekend Edition, covering some of the big stories from the past week in the world of sports. It was a week of international football, local leagues were on break, allowing the big stars to join their national teams for some exciting, exciting friendly matches and interesting Euro 2016 qualifiers. This was the case throughout the world and also here in Israel with two crucial matches and the road to France 2016. It started on Saturday night in the northern city of Haifa. There was big optimism ahead of the match since Israel came in as group leaders. But Gareth Bale came to town. The Real Madrid midfielder led Wales to a great win, putting the Welsh in a great position to qualify to their first big tournament in nearly 60 years. Michael Friedman was at the Sami Ofer Stadium and witnessed the Israeli optimism before kickoff and the Welsh euphoria at the end. The Sami Ofer Stadium in Haifa featured the second home match for the Israeli football team in its bid to qualify for Euro 2016. Israel went into the match with high hopes after its last heroic victory over Bosnia, and the fans were all wishing to see the same flair. We see Israel versus Wales, and we are fighting is the, to remain the first place in our group. And we are coming with all these fans in the new stadium over here. It's going to be amazing. Before the match, both the Israeli and Welsh fans came together in the beauty that football has to offer. With everyone taking photos together and dancing side by side, it was another wonderful display of the sport. For some kids, it was their first time at an Israeli football game. Parents wrapped flags on their children with big smiles. The Israelis got to the stadium early in excitement and decorated their faces with their nation's colors. Those fans were also wearing their favorite player's jersey and believe this stadium is the future for Israel. It's amazing. You have all these fans and then you have all the, the little flags and the atmosphere is amazing. It's, I think it's the best stadium right now in the, in the whole Israel. Despite the distance, many Welsh fans made the trip to support their team. And what they lacked in numbers, they made up in enthusiasm. The Welsh were jumping up and down, chanting their local songs with confidence. And for other fans from Wales, they were feeling at home with the rain. The omens are with Wales today because we've now got Welsh weather. It's definitely, this is like summer for us. Really nice. For many of those fans, it was their first time in Israel. And beyond the game itself, it provided many the opportunity to see some of the most holy sites in Israel. We arrived here two days ago, and we've seen a lot of things in the last two days. Not very little sleep, but we've been to uh, all the, the tourist sites. We've been to Bethlehem, um, Jerusalem, Dead Sea, Nazareth, Sea of Galilee in the last couple of days, and now we're here, finally arrived. All eyes were on Gareth Bale, and every fan was hoping to see a glimpse of the 100 million euro striker for Real Madrid. Fans from both countries made signs for the superstar, and some were hoping to be rewarded with his jersey after the match. All of the Welsh fans wanted to see him make magic once again. We hope for a Gareth Bale double. Gareth Bale double. Morgan knew what he was talking about. Gareth Bale got the double and Wales, who was by far the better team on the pitch, won 3-0. The hero of the night was obviously delighted following the match. I love playing for Wales. It's, it's, uh, it's a big honor for me. and. Um, yeah, the most important thing is I just concentrate on my football. I don't listen to anyone else, what they're saying, and uh, just enjoy my football with the boys. Wales are hoping to be heading towards their own promised land of playing at a major tournament for the first time since the 1958 World Cup. While the result was not what Israel was looking for, it was another display of international football in this small but patriotic nation. Three days after losing to Wales, Israel was once again on the pitch, this time in Jerusalem, and facing one of the best teams in world football. Eden Azar, Thibaut Courtois, Marwan Fellani, and Kevin De Bruyne are just some of the stars that make up the Belgian team, number four in the FIFA rankings. Israel looked much better this time out, playing the Belgians for the entire second half, but the result was still negative as Belgium walks away with the three points. Michael Friedman was in Jerusalem for an evening that left the fans disappointed but with high hopes for the future. Teddy Stadium in Jerusalem hosted the match between Israel and Belgium, which brought passionate supporters from two great nations. The Israelis were all dressed in blue and white with their faces painted, hoping to bounce back from a disappointing result against Wales. 
Despite experiencing their first loss in their Euro 2016 qualifiers just three days prior, it didn't prevent them from showing their support. Some of the fans even prayed at the Western Wall before the game, hoping for a positive result. Yeah, I went to the Kotel today. I talked with God. I say, give us a draw. The fans came from all over the world in this exciting matchup wearing the Israeli colors. And for some of the Belgian fans, they hold dual citizenship and were very excited for the match. It's a dream to see a game between Belgium and Israel. And so I'm Israeli and Belgium too, so to be in Jerusalem to see these games is just a dream for all of us. So it's very nice. We are very pleased. The Red Devils came off the fan buses excited and screaming. Looking like true European football supporters, there are fans of all ages decorated in red, yellow and black. Although they were the minority at the match, they knew their voices would carry loud throughout Jerusalem. Yeah, because we're yelling for 10, so that's okay. And I think we're 3 for 100, so even 3 for 100, we're all in red and yellow, you will notice us. And for some of the Belgian fans, Israel was not what they expected. Uh, it's a beautiful country. Honestly, what we hear in the media is really bad for Israel. But I feel you need to come to Israel to refute what they say in the media. Israel is a beautiful country and the people are very nice. The match was a battle and despite Belgium scoring early on, the Israeli side gave it everything they had. A second half red card to Belgian defender Vincent Kompany also provided the Israelis an extra boost of hope. The Manchester City player was not happy with the referee's decision, but knows that's part of the game. Probably I will always have a different opinion than the referee. <laughs> but um. <clears throat> it's part of football. I, I was saying to your colleagues, um, you know, if you give everything you have, you should never feel sorry. And, you know, that's, that's my task. I'm a defender. It happens. While the Israelis showed great resilience, it was just not enough to take any points from one of the best teams in the world. Belgium left Israel with a 1-0 victory and became the new leaders of Group B. The Belgian goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois had a lot of supporters at the match, and the superstar was very pleased with his experience in the Holy Land. Yeah, it's very nice. It was a nice atmosphere in the stadium. It was a nice game of football, and we are happy to win. But for the Israeli players, it was tough to swallow the loss as they were so close to equalizing. You know, in the moment that we start to press Belgium, we can also feel the support from the from our fans. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, the goal was on the air, and it's a pity that we didn't score. Despite losing, the match was truly special for the Israeli players in front of a fantastic crowd. It was amazing, really amazing, and for me it was very touching, especially in the end. That uh, I think it's first first time that I remember when we lose a game in national team and the crowd is uh, clapping hands for us. The Israeli team will now have to wait to bounce back in their next fixture, which will take place on June 12th in Bosnia. Although the disappointment is big after taking no points from two home matches, the ability they showed in the second half against Belgium can leave the fans with some hope ahead of their next crucial match. And Michael, who did not get a lot of sleep this week, is here with us in the studio. Hi, Michael. Hi. So we'll speak of football in, in a minute, but first, we're not used to high-level football here in Israel. And then we see two great games, big stars, Eden Azar, Gareth Bale, sold-out stadiums. Football begins with football culture. Finally, we have it here, despite the fact we lost both games. It's something very special for Israel. Two huge countries coming here, incredible football, and the fans were remarkable, really. It was something we felt as if we were in Europe. They were chanting the whole game, screaming before the match. Everyone was there early, getting their, their face painted. It was, the atmosphere was really special, and I think it's a growth of the sport in this country, and the better, you know, unfortunately they didn't win, but they did grow a lot in, in these two games. Let's, let, let's hope some, this is something we take for the future, because these are things yep. we do not um, usually see here in Israel. Now we have to speak about the results, what can we do? Two negative results, zero points from six, but the second half we saw against Belgium on Tuesday night gives us a lot of hope, especially going into that match in Bosnia in June, because that will probably be the match deciding who finishes third and goes to the playoffs. Absolutely. The second half of the Belgium match was a switch just turned on. Yes, they were fortunate to have company get kicked off uh, with the red card, but the players really stepped up. I don't know what the, the halftime speech was, but the players really responded. They were really moving forward, had a lot of possession, great opportunities. Unfortunately, couldn't find the net, but they had a, they had a big obstacle with uh, Corta right there. So I think what they'll do for the next match against Bosnia is, is take what they t did there 
and they also won in the last game against them. So it will be a crucial game. It will be very challenging to beat them away, but that could very well decide whether or not they become third in the group. Yeah. How many times do we see one of the best two goalkeepers in the world in Israel? We have seen him this week. Huge, huge uh, games here, and let's see what happens in Bosnia in June. Michael Friedman, thank you very much. Thank you. Time to gear up and move to the world of Formula One. And if you thought this year would be another walk in the park for Team Mercedes, well, think again. Sebastian Vettel, who moved this summer from Red Bull to Ferrari, won the second race of the 2015 season in Malaysia and sent a clear message to the German maker and the world champion driver, Lewis Hamilton, that the Scuderia is back and they will put up a fight. <laughs> The Malaysian Grand Prix was another exciting and fast-paced race with high expectations for returning champion Lewis Hamilton and the seemingly unbeatable Mercedes team. The race got off to a clean start with Hamilton pulling ahead of Sebastian Vettel on the first lap, but things would change for Ferrari. Vettel went ahead and produced a tactical masterclass to overhaul Hamilton and swerve through the finish line 8.5 seconds ahead of the double world champion. What a joy for the German driver and the Italian maker. Ferrari's back. Ferrari's back. The German then stood on top of his car, jumping up and down, waving his team's flag. The four-time world champion was especially happy to win his first victory for Ferrari since 2013. Well, it's been a while I've been, I haven't been on the top step, so uh, my first time, obviously, with the Scuderia Ferrari. Um, speechless. I don't know. Oh, obviously a big change over winter and uh, the welcome the team gave me is just uh, fantastic. The fans, uh, I've only done two races, but uh, it's really a, a great atmosphere. I'm very, very happy and proud of today. We beat them fair and square, so great achievement. We have a great car, so plenty of positives, and I guess that's why it is a bit emotional. Vettel has now won a Grand Prix for three separate teams, Toro Rosso, Red Bull, and Ferrari. The victory ended a long drought for the team in red, whose last win was at the Spanish Grand Prix in 2013. While Hamilton is not accustomed to losing, the second place driver was very humble and congratulated his competitor. Well, firstly, a huge congratulations to Ferrari and to Sebastian. They did an amazing well job. I mean, geez, they had some good pace today. Um, I gave it everything I could. We, we did as a team and um, just, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, I knew coming into this weekend that they made a step. We didn't know how big, but uh, they were too fast for us today. Mercedes had a smooth ride last year, winning the top two spots and easily winning the constructors' competition. The German maker now understands there's another player on the field, and they feel ready for the challenge. All I can say now on behalf of our team is uh, game, on, game on, Ferrari. At the end of the day, it was all celebrations for Sebastian Vettel as he popped champagne all around. He will be seeking more Grand Prix titles this season in the hopes of dethroning Lewis Hamilton. The next episode in this thrilling race is two weeks away as the third race of the season is set for April 12th in Shanghai, China. And now it's time to look at the latest from the NBA. And with me here in the studio is our NBA analyst, Danny Swibel. Hi, Danny. How are you doing today? Fine. Thank you for coming. Danny, we feared last week uh, the, the Kevin Durant situation. Now we know for sure he's out for the season. You look at the big names that are that, that are injured. Some of them will be back, like, like Derrick Rose, but Kobe Bryant is out. Paul George is out. Kevin Durant is out. You can't help but think they play too many games per season. There's 82 regular games. There's playoffs. They play international every, every two summers. Should we expect the league to play 20, 25 games less, perhaps? Well, first of all, you can make an NBA dynasty with all these all-stars yeah, who are out. I mean, it's insane. Sure. Uh, this is something that uh, more and more teams are starting to discuss. Uh, to tell you the truth, the number of injuries over the last three years has uh, gone down slightly, but the number of injuries for the all-stars specifically has been on the rise uh, because they're definitely putting in a lot of minutes. And this has actually been the subject of a lot of discussion with uh, several teams, including the Bulls, who are trying to limit the minutes of certain players. And that upsets certain guys because it ruins maybe the rhythm, it prevents the team from from being, being able to fully win or do what they have to do to compete. Just think how, how the Bulls were, were hampered by injuries with Derrick Rose going in and out all the time. That's right, and not only with Derrick Rose, which is like how we hope that he rehabs and he's able to be back before playoffs, but this is a big controversy with uh, the, the, the Bulls ownership and the coach, is if he's playing the players too hard and giving them too many minutes, and then in the end, you're just slowly wearing them down over the course of the season, because for the last several seasons, we've seen a team like the Bulls deal with injuries, and they're not the only ones 
ones who are going through a similar story. And so, yes, this is a debate that needs to be had. Players are starting to finally come out and say, hey, maybe I got to stop looking at it just being a competitor in the game and worrying about that I will have a life after this. Yeah, and just think what the Eastern Conference would look like with, with Paul George, with, with, with Derrick Rose completely, completely fit. Uh, maybe maybe the Hawks won't be there in first place. I, this is something that we will think about for a long time. I mean, Paul George, D. Rose, all these players out. It's ridiculous. And the West Coast, too. Blake Griffin and Kevin Durant. These are some of the major competitors on these teams. So we're looking at a very different playoff uh, picture without them. And it is sad for the game because these are the people that we like to follow. Uh, uh, it remains to be seen. Just let's hope we don't see any big injuries again. Danny Swibel, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. And that's it for this week in edition. Don't forget you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv, also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.